abrindo, é um imenso prazer estar aqui novamente com vocês. Estou muito feliz de estar aqui com vocês. Estou muito feliz de, de poder né, aparecer na frente de vocês. Já faz um tempo que eu não apareço, mas eu estou aqui, galera. E é, fico aqui assim, pensando, sabe? Porque hoje foi meu dia de folga do trabalho, então eu fiquei meditando e pensando um pouco é, sobre como tem sido esse processo de lançar um canal no YouTube, é, atingir seguidores, continuar lutando em meio das adversidades, em meio das dificuldades e estou aprendendo muito sobre mim. É, estou começando a fazer coisas assim que eu nunca esperava é, que eu era capaz de fazer, sabe? É, eu tenho seis, quase 600 seguidores é, e eu lembro de quando eu estava comemorando sem seguidores. Eu sei que não sou igual aqueles youtubers que têm milhares ou milhões de seguidores, mas eu acredito que meu canal está crescendo e meu canal está sendo do jeito que eu quero. Ou seja, eu estou sendo eu mesmo aqui na frente de vocês. Vocês estão vendo a transformação assim, de uma pessoa tímida que não gostava de falar na frente das, das pessoas, compartilhando uma cultura, compartilhando uma língua. Então esse processo todo tem sido incrível, tem sido incrível, porque eu tenho aprendido muito sobre mim mesmo, que eu mesmo sou capaz de falar na frente das pessoas. Eu mesmo sou capaz de aparecer na frente da câmera. Então eu estou muito feliz com isso. E estou muito feliz porque vocês estão acompanhando esse processo, porque era uma coisa, sabe, aprender a língua portuguesa, aprender outras línguas, mas é outra coisa você compartilhar seu dia a dia, compartilhar coisas da sua cultura e ensinar dicas sobre a sua língua nativa, ou seja, dicas na sua língua nativa. E estou muito feliz de ter vocês me acompanhando, <risos> me seguindo, é, e eu sei que às vezes eu falo umas coisas da forma errada, e vocês podem ficar à vontade de me corrigir quando eu falar alguma coisa errada. Vocês podem, super indico isso, porque isso somente vai é, me ajudar a melhorar meu português. Porque meu português realmente não é perfeito. Por isso que quando eu gravei aquele vídeo que eu falava é, sobre meu sotaque, eu, eu assim botei no início, é americano falando sem sotaque, mas eu troquei para especificar, porque na minha mente era um americano falando assim, sotaque é, típico. É, porque muita gente falava assim, você tem um pouco de sotaque sim, você fala um pouco errado às vezes, mas o seu sotaque é muito legal. Ou seja, você está falando assim, muito parecido com o um nativo. E eu fiquei muito feliz com isso. É, isso. Esse vídeo é um dos meus vídeos que tem mais visualizações, e eu estou muito feliz com esse vídeo. Porque esse vídeo não era simplesmente para mostrar... É, que eu consegui falar, sabe? Que eu consegui aprender a língua portuguesa. Não era para me achar. Era simplesmente para, é, sabe? Para inspirar vocês que estão aprendendo outra língua. Era simplesmente para inspirar vocês e falar para vocês e mostrar para vocês que você é capaz de aprender. Você é capaz de diminuir é, o nível do seu sotaque. É, e isso é muito possível. Apesar de que tem pessoas assim que falam, você nunca vai conseguir falar como nativo. Eu me esforcei tanto para conseguir, porque no fundo do meu coração eu sabia que era possível se aproximar ao sotaque de uma pessoa nativa. É, então, estou muito feliz com isso, estou muito feliz de ter todos vocês aqui no meu canal. E hoje eu vou falar um pouco assim é, sobre as minhas experiências no Brasil. É, porque tem umas pessoas me perguntando sobre as minhas experiências no Brasil. Mas eu vou falar sobre essas experiências em inglês. E eu vou tentar colocar legendas para vocês. Eu nunca fiz um vídeo assim com legendas, traduzindo tudo que eu, que eu falava. Então tenha um pouco de paciência comigo, porque eu vou tentar fazer isso. Talvez, assim, seja uma coisa que você vai ter que clicar na descrição ou nas opções de legendas, talvez vocês vão ter que clicar e eu vou ter que botar a tradução assim dessa forma ou talvez eu vou conseguir editar as legendas para aparecer sem vocês fazerem nenhuma coisa. Mas de qualquer jeito, tentam colocar as legendas se for preciso para você, né? Que talvez seja muito iniciante. Tente colocar assim através do YouTube. Através do YouTube mesmo, do, é, das configurações que estão aparecendo lá embaixo do vídeo. 
tenta fazer dessa maneira se não estiver aparecendo na sua tela. Mas se já estiver aparecendo sem você fazer nenhuma coisa, você não precisa fazer nada. Eu vou tentar dessa forma, tá bom? Eu vou falar um pouco das minhas experiências no Brasil, vou falar um pouco assim de como foi né, visitar o Brasil e também como foi um pouco assim esse processo de aprender a língua portuguesa. E sei que tem pessoas falando aqui é porque minha família está perto de mim. I'm starting this video now in English. Uh, I know a lot of you have been asking for me to speak in English. Uh, so I'm going to speak in English today. And we're really going to test your English skills with me speaking only in English. So this is for the people who can already understand a little bit of English. And for the people that cannot un understand a lot of English, uh, I'm going to find a way to create an option uh, so you can read the subtitles. So I'm going to create subtitles. I'm going to uh, make a way for that. And um, as I said before, I'm going to talk a little bit about my process and how I learned Portuguese and also how uh, my first visit to Brazil was and like things that I did and things that happened. So <laughs> I started learning Portuguese, um, I think around uh, four or five years ago. Um, I started to learn Portuguese because I remember having some friends that were uh, Portuguese speakers and I couldn't understand what they were saying when they would talk to their family and friends. So, and it sounded very similar to Spanish. As many of you know, I also speak Spanish. So I couldn't quite understand everything that they were saying, but I could pick up some things because of the similarities between English and uh, between Portuguese and Spanish. Sorry, I don't know why I said that. But um, that made me really interested in learning Portuguese because I heard it and I was like, man, I need to learn this. I need to understand what this person's saying. So uh, that is why I began to study Portuguese. Uh, in the beginning, my Portuguese was very very uh, bad it was a mixture between Spanish and Portuguese what we call Portunhol as many of you know as Portunhol and I used to mix a lot of words like uh, I don't know like instead of saying onde I would say donde which is Spanish where and a lot of different things like that so yeah it was kind of strange but Uh, I think a lot of uh, native Spanish speakers and a lot of native Portuguese speakers that are learning Spanish understand. So someone that speaks Spanish natively that's learning Portuguese will understand exactly what I'm saying. And also someone that speaks Portuguese uh, natively that's learning Spanish will understand what Portunhol is. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so I was the type of person uh, who utilized... Uh, books, uh, magazines, I utilized websites, and I also utilized dictionaries and um, different kind of books that would teach me about grammar. So, like, the main things that helped me were uh, books to read, magazines, websites, uh, like news websites, and also uh, grammar books. And I was the type of person who was more focused on uh, my pronunciation in the beginning. Because I wanted uh, people to understand everything that I was saying. Because if we don't have any base of communication, how are we going to uh, communicate? How are we going to talk to others? So my initial priority uh, was... Uh, speaking and once I could speak basic things like the alphabet uh, basic phrases like hi how are you what's your name how old are you once I conquered these basic things I began to move on uh, to basic grammar you know like uh, pronouns uh, different verbs conjugations I started to work harder like I started to work towards past tense present and future 
So my, my initial focus, like I said before, was basic phrases, basic words to create some kind of base, uh, to create uh, some kind of basic structure. And once I had the basic uh, foundation, basic structure, uh, I began to study grammar. And I started with past tense, present tense, future tense. And it was really good. It was really good. And uh, once I created a, once I could understand past tense, present and future, I began to study slang. Slang is a very, very complicated thing for us Americans that don't uh, speak Portuguese. Because uh, I studied Brazilian Portuguese and Brazilian Portuguese is very complex when it comes to slang. Because every region uh, has different slang. And slang can mean more than one thing, even in English. So it's quite a complicated thing. Um, what else should I say? Um, yeah, I studied. I focused on pronunciation first. Then I started to mix grammar and pronunciation together. And yeah, it was, it was crazy. It took me a very long time to understand the conjugations in Portuguese. It took me a very long time to uh, work on my pronunciation because it sounded more like I was speaking Spanish than Portuguese. And also, uh, when I was saying things in Portuguese, uh, I got confused with Spanish because Spanish is very similar. Um, let me think. Um, I think another thing is, um, I, when, when I started learning Portuguese, I, I used to study with a lot of people from Rio, uh, a lot of people from the city of Rio. So I practiced with a lot of cariocas and my accent was very strong like a carioca. And that was when my Portuguese was like intermediate level. And after it was immediate level, I started to have more contact with people from Sao Paulo, uh, people from the city of Sao Paulo, and also people from uh, the countryside of Sao Paulo, so Paulistas, Paulistanos, yeah. And now when I speak Portuguese, I speak more like a Paulista, you know, like someone from the state of Sao Paulo. And um, it took a lot of time, but it was worth it. It, it was a, a crazy journey, but now I can speak Portuguese fluently. Now I can uh, speak Portuguese with not, with, uh, without speaking Portunhol. And I can speak Portuguese without a typical American or typical uh, Hispanic accent. Someone that speaks Spanish. And I think you guys can do the same. So if you're learning English and you think that your pronunciation is not so great, uh, you can work on your pronunciation the same way that I did. My, my process for working on my pronunciation was listening to native speakers and studying the pronunciations of every letter of every word. Because, in, in, for example, in Portuguese, there's different accent marks uh, on each letter, and that can change the total pronunciation of a word. So we have to be careful with that. And I think if you're learning English, you have to pay attention to letters, because sometimes letters can be silent. Uh, and I have some videos that talk about silent letters, and I think it's very important for you to practice uh, learning Practice with native speakers and also learn about different sounds that letters can make. Um, and that's it about my process of learning uh, Portuguese. I just think that if you guys continue to study, if you guys continue to work, it's possible for you guys to speak without an accent in English. Uh, maybe it's not going to be perfect, but you can sound very similar to a native speaker. So if you're having a tough time, don't give up. Just keep studying and keep working. You can do it. If, if I can do it, I know that you can do it. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about my time in Brazil. Uh, my first trip to Brazil, I remember, was, uh, well, many years ago. Um, and I remember when I used to think about Brazil, I used to think about, like, the, the tropical country, you know, like the Amazon. I used to think about beaches. I used to think about uh, it being just a warm place, you know, like, a very hot place uh, with a lot of like a lot of uh, like a lot of music you know like different kind of music like pagode samba and those different kind of music 
the, those different styles of music, right? Those different kinds of uh, sounds and music and instruments. And that was like one of the main things I had in my mind about Brazil. Um, I didn't have the typical uh, stereotype that people have about Brazil because when I was in high school, I had a friend who was a foreign student, foreign exchange student, and he was from Brazil. So he shared with us a lot of things about his culture. So we didn't have the typical stereotypes that people have about uh, Brazil and Brazilian people. So in my case, I had more of an understanding about Brazil. And no, I didn't think that Brazilians speak Spanish. No, I didn't think that uh, Argentina was Brazil, you know, or Buenos Aires, something like that. No, I didn't, I didn't have that kind of stereotype because I was already familiar with Brazilian culture. <laughs> um, but I will say that some people do think that Brazilians speak Spanish here in the United States, but they don't think that Buenos Aires is the capital. Everyone. Uh, although uh, some people may think that, uh, you know, like uh, Rio is the capital of Brazil or Sao Paulo is the capital of Brazil. That's one thing that I think people may believe. So that might be a true uh, common misconception. And let me think. Um, yeah, so most people know that uh, Brazilians speak Portuguese. Most people know that Buenos Aires or Argentina is not part of Brazil. And most people understand that... Uh, Brazilian people are very friendly people. So, yeah. Um, that's one thing that we know a lot about. Is that Brazilian people seem to be like happy people. But it's true also that a lot of American people think that Brazil is just like a party nation. Like everyone's partying 100% of the time. Uh, that's because of a lot of movies. A lot of, uh, a lot of videos and things we see about Brazil. And I guess we just don't have enough exposure. Uh, we don't know enough about uh, Brazilian daily life. So that's another thing that we don't know so much about. Um, so yeah, I went to Brazil. Uh, the first place I went to was Rio. Uh, I remember spending time in Rio, the marvelous city, you know. Uh, it's so beautiful. Uh, so many places to visit, Copacabana, Ipanema. Uh, I remember the beaches, I remember Cristo, I remember uh, Pão de Açúcar, I remember all these different places, uh, I remember different cities in Rio. Um, I just remember it, like it being one of the most beautiful places that I've ever been to, but also at the same time I was kind of like super cautious because I had some bad experiences in Brazil too, like there was one time that I was robbed in Brazil and it was a bad experience you know it was crazy because i didn't expect to be robbed uh but we have to remember to be careful i think that was one mistake but tip but it was something that i couldn't avoid because it was the taxi person that robbed me so it was kind of like impossible for me to protect myself from that situation because i was inside the person's car and there was nothing I could do. The person had a weapon and I couldn't do anything. Uh, but that was one bad experience. But I just remember the beauty of Rio. I remember uh, talking to strangers. I remember talking to people. And they were so friendly. They were so nice. Um, I remember my time in Espiritu Santo. Um, which was also a place with beautiful beaches. <laughs> and... A lot of nice people. Uh, I remember the African influence in Bahia, Salvador, and Porto Seguro. I remember all the beautiful places there, and it was a great experience. I also spent some time on the, in the countryside of uh, Bahia, which was a crazy experience because I remember going to a small town that did not have very many people, so it was a crazy experience. When I arrived at the, the small city in the countryside, uh, everyone kept on looking at me because I was listening to music in Spanish and I was talking to someone in Spanish. So the people knew right away that I was from a different place. And every time I walked in the streets, 
every time I walked to the supermarket, every time I walked to go buy something, everyone knew that I was from somewhere else, that I was a foreigner. And I, it was like the first time in my life that I felt like a celebrity or a popular person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah, it was a crazy experience. I remember my time in Minas Gerais, Belo Horizonte. Uh, Belo Horizonte is a very beautiful place. Belo Horizonte has amazing music, uh, amazing food, amazing culture, uh, a lot of nice people there. Uh, it's probably one of the best places to eat in Brazil because of, because of all the good food that's there. And um, what else? Um, I also like uh, pão de queijo, uh, cheese bread, you know, it's so good. And just the music also, the music was very beautiful and very nice to dance to. I learned how to dance a little bit in Brazil. Uh, I learned about uh, slangs, I learned about a lot of things, you know. Like when my friends used to say, uai, uai. And in Bahia, when my friends used to say, oxi, oxi. Or they used to say, Maia, you know, stuff like that. Uh, when I went to Bahia in Minas Gerais, uh, it seemed like the people were speaking a totally different language. And it took a very long time for me to begin to understand what they were trying to say because they would use a lot of slang. And it was just crazy, you know, it's just, it's just a crazy experience. And I think uh, a lot of things I understood better because I'm also Latino because of my father, he's Mexican and my mother's American. But I think because, uh, because I'm a Latino also, uh, that helped me uh, understand a little bit more about Brazilian culture. Like when people hug each other, when people kiss on the cheek, I think that was something uh, normal for uh, me, something normal for me, for my culture and because I'm Latino but I think for typical Americans that are not Latinos uh, it can be something uh, a little bit different it can be something kind of strange so, you know uh, people using slang is something very difficult for us because like in Bahia and Minas Gerais uh, there's a lot of slang um, it's crazy for us it's it's hard for us to understand so much slang and I think it's uh, uh, a difficult challenge for us because when you learn a language you're trying to understand the language uh, formally you're trying to speak correctly uh, but after you speak formally and correctly you want to start to begin to understand informal things informal phrases informal words slang uh, so yeah it's a very complex process but it's possible you know so yeah I had great experiences in Brazil I went to uh, Rio, Sao Paulo, Minas Gerais, uh, Bahia and Santa Catarina, Florianópolis uh, I had great I had a great time in Brazil the times I've been to Brazil I had great experiences in Brazil and it was amazing you know so I'm very happy with my experience in Brazil uh, I'm very happy to be here talking with you guys and yeah so I think uh, I think for you guys that are learning English sometimes it seems difficult because aside from learning the language itself you're also trying to understand slang you're also trying to understand things that we say that are not grammatically correct but there are things we use in our daily lives so don't be overwhelmed uh, don't lose your hope, uh, just keep studying and you will understand, you will learn more. So don't give up guys, this, this video is to motivate you guys to continue, uh, to continue working towards uh, becoming fluent in English. And I'm making this video in English so that you can practice your listening, because it's a very important thing for you to practice your listening. Uh, even if you're using the subtitles on the screen, it's important for you to get your ear used uh, to listening. So, yeah, I thank all of you guys that are my subscribers. I thank all of you guys that are following me. Uh, I thank 
Thank you all for the comments. Thank you all for sharing my videos. Uh, I'm just a normal guy. I don't think too much of myself. I try to remain humble and to be the simple guy that I am. So please subscribe to the channel if you like my videos. Don't forget to like the video, share with your friends, and uh, share with the Brazilian people so I can help more Brazilians learn English. Because when I was studying Portuguese, the Brazilian people helped me. So thank you very much, guys. Subscribe, share, like. Thank you. See you later.